What do you think the criteria should be that a Secretary of State uses to decide it's time to call a border poll? We're joined by Dr Alan Rennick from University College London, who chaired a working group looking at referendums on Northern Ireland's constitutional future, and for Emma Clements, the Northern Editor of the Irish Times. Welcome to both of you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Lou. Alan, take us straight away, would you, to the Good Friday Agreement. What does it say? So it says, William, that the Secretary of State... I mean, first of all, the Secretary of State can call the border poll whenever they want. Uh, so that's one thing. But then they must call a border poll if, and it says, if it appears... If at any time it appears likely to the Secretary of State that a majority of those voting would express a wish for a united Ireland. So the kind of most important criterion there is that it says a majority of those voting. So it's a simple majority, 50% plus one of those voting. Um, and the Secretary of State basically is being asked to make a judgment on uh, what would happen if they called a, a referendum, what would happen several months after that uh, when the vote actually took place. Uh, now, that's, that's the easy bit, <laughs> just stating what it says mm -hmm. in the Good Friday Agreement. But there are different ways in which you can... Um, estimate the likeliness, the likelihood of support for a referendum, right? From opinion polls to party performances in elections, the weightings within the Assembly, all of that. Yeah, exactly. So we produced our report a year ago, and that was an attempt to look in a very impartial way, without taking sides on whether there should be a, a referendum, certainly not taking sides on what the result should be. Uh, we simply were looking at what would this process actually involve? And as you say, it's really complicated. So we found that there were, there were six kinds of evidence that could be taken into account by the Secretary of State. So they could look at votes cast in elections, they could look at seats won in elections, they could look at if the Northern Ireland Assembly decided to, to vote in itself on, on saying that there should be a referendum, they would need to take that into account. Then, as you said, um, opinion polls, clearly they would want to take opinion polls into account. Um, they might look at census data. So, of course, we just had the census data last week. Um, so that might be relevant. And also, that's all numbers, but they also might look at what we call more kind of qualitative evidence. So sort of focus groups, kind of soundings around in civil society, gauging the mood of people. Um, so those are six different kinds of evidence that they could use. It's clear that some of those kinds of evidence don't give very good um, evidence. So the census... You know, we know that uh, now there are more people identifying as Catholic than as Protestant um, in the census. But we also know that that doesn't give us a very good guide to how people would vote in a border poll if one were to take place. So really, it's votes in elections, um, opinion polls. These are probably the sources of evidence that are going to get most attention. Freya, is there much momentum within the Republic to answer this question publicly, to set out the criteria, whatever the criteria is, to make it public? I think there, there's much less momentum than there is north of the border. Um, I mean, this question around what the criteria would, would be um, is something that I, th I think there, there's an increasing um, preoccupation with um, in Northern Ireland. You can argue that um, obviously this has always been the question precisely because that language, and it was deliberately written this way, but precisely because that language in, in the, the Good Friday Agreement is, is so opaque. And I mean, we saw even in, in the wake of the, the census results last week, you know, the, the, the civic pro-unity group Ireland's Future coming out and saying right now is the time you have to set, set out the, these criteria. Uh, I mean, there, there have been, I mean, obviously, again, south of the border, you know, Sinn Féin, um, you know, pushing forward very much the, the, the idea of, of the Citizens' Assembly. I mean, we, we heard the, the Tanis to Leo Varadkar earlier this year um talk about the, the need for these cri criteria to, to be to be set out but i mean bro broadly speaking in, in in the republic certainly in terms of government the push is not towards unity you know the, the push is, is or indeed a unity referendum the push is, is around things like um the the shared island um initiatives and, and certainly i would imagine that that if and when the time does come for a conversation about the criteria for a, a border poll that the irish government will would want to have an in input in, into that and certainly have discussions ar around that so mm. the emphasis from them will be very much on you know a, 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 a collegiate a approach um uh, when, when it comes to the time for that decision are you as confused as i am freya by what peter kyle has said because on the, on one way of reading what he said He's simply saying, I'll do what the Good Friday Agreement says. Another way of reading it is, I'm prepared to make public the criteria in advance. Yeah. 
yeah and i mean in, in that that's in that sense it is a step forward because usually what, what is, what is said. said in these well it, well if if that is what he said because he 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 sort of prefaces this with that he will only do this if it becomes likely that the conditions outlined in the Belfast Agreement, right. the Good Friday Agreement, will be met. So we're back to that question of what kind of precisely are these conditions. But if, a thing that I thought was, was significant, actually, um, it was that there was a response to this from the Northern Ireland office, so the UK government in, in Northern Ireland, to myself, to the Irish Times last night, in which they responded to this. And again, when you usually when you put that question forward, you're referred to the Good Friday Agreement. And so, you know, it, it's, it's all it's all laid out on, on that. Um, they actually said to, said to me last night that the opinion of the NIO is that there is no clear basis to suggest that a majority of people in Northern Ireland presently wish to separate from, from the United Kingdom. So that's actually coming onto the pitch and, and responding to the unity debate, which, which is something that's really quite un, unusual. Um, and it's a tacit admission there that there actually is a question there to be answered. Mm. And maybe this is getting into semantics, but they, they didn't say there's no basis. They said there's no clear basis. Now, to be honest, I don't know how you can say that. And again, you know, with respect to all that we've said about how do you measure this criteria, if you want to take one recent measure, if you look at the, the assembly election results in May, you know, broadly you're talking about 40, 40, 20. So if you have roughly 20, it was a bit less than that, but if you have roughly 20 um, who, 20% 20 who you don't know what they will, but what way they will, will vote and a majority, a simple majority is 50% plus one, can you actually accurately say that that that, 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 that there is no clear basis, you, you know, you, you, you just don't know. So I think that this this is the situation that we're in. And that still brings us back to that question of, well, what are the criteria? Just one final question on, on the, um, the criteria, Alan Rennick. Do you have the impression that various secretaries of state actually had it written down somewhere? This is the criteria that will guide me. Uh, no, I don't think they did. And we have some insight into this from uh, a court case. So th there was a court case a couple of years ago that was launched in order to try to get the Secretary of State to st set out the criteria. And the court decided that the Secretary of State doesn't have a legal obligation to set out the criteria. But the evidence that came out in the course of that kind of indicated that um, officials in the Northern Ireland office had been thinking about the kinds of evidence um, that they might use, but they were quite clear that they hadn't really thought this through in any depth. And the important thing is not just that you know what the evidence is that you might use, but also you know what amount of weight you would attach to different kinds of evidence. Um, and, you know, that's the really tricky bit. And actually, I mean, we concluded that it's, it's incredibly difficult, actually, in the abstract, to specify precisely what weight you would attach to opinion polls versus election results and so on. Because, mm. you know, it depends, for example, on if you're giving weight to election results, how much weight you give to that will depend on whether calling a border poll was a big issue in the election campaign or not. Yeah. You know, if it wasn't a big issue, yeah. then you're not going to attach much weight to it. Whereas if it was, then maybe you would. So it's actually a really difficult challenge to specify this question. Well, I mean, call me cynical, Alan, but is it possible, is it possible that this opaqueness is, is planned, it's purposeful, and that the point of the exercise is that the Secretary of State can do what they want, and whatever they decide to do, they can then kind of reverse engineer the criteria to say this is why I did it. Uh, well, I'm sure it is purposeful and it does give the Secretary of State some flexibility. But, but um, the number one obligation that the Secretary of State is under, and this is very clear in the Belfast Good Friday Agreement, is they must act with rigorous impartiality. So if it appears that the Secretary of State is trying to uh, manipulate the evidence in order to get the result that they want, to get the, the decision that they want on this, then then they would be going against the, the Belfast Good Friday Agreement and then they would be in danger of a backlash in the courts and also clearly a political backlash as well. And, and I promise you this is my final question on the constitutional stuff. Alan, uh, we've heard some debate about whether there would need to be two referendums at the same time, north and south of the border. That's not explained in the Good Friday Agreement, doesn't specify two referendums. Is it possible that you could get, you could meet the terms of the Good Friday Agreement by having one referendum north of the border and a simple vote in the Dáil, the assent of the Irish government to, to an outcome? 
Well, what the agreement says is that there needs to be a process of democratic decision-making taking place both north and south. Uh, so you need a democratic decision in favour of unification both north and south. As you say, it, it specifies a referendum in Northern Ireland. It doesn't specify a referendum in the south. Um, but most of the experts would say, and this is certainly what we concluded in our report, that... Uh, both in legal terms, in the South, you would need constitutional amendments. They would require a referendum. But also just because this is su would be such a huge, huge event uh, for Ireland. Why would they need a referendum it be... when it's already an aspirational dimension of the current ref uh, constitution? Well, there are some features of the requirements that the, the sovereign state, the mm. state that is sovereign over Northern Ireland, must meet. Uh, that Ireland doesn't currently meet mm -hmm. in terms of equal franchise requirements for British and Irish citizens, for example. So yeah. there are some, there, at least there are some technical changes that would have to be made. If you wanted to change uh, to the, the constitution, constitution, you need a referendum for sure. But I, I'm just, I'm just yeah. saying that Baron McGraw, the former director of public prosecutions here, he, he said he, he thought it would actually be sufficient uh, for a referendum north of the border and an assent vote from the Dáil because the Irish constitution is already there. Well, um, as I say, most, pe most people would say that in legal terms you would need to change the constitution in Ireland in order for unification to happen within the terms of the Belfast Good Friday Agreement, but also just in political terms, because it would be such a huge event. It would be kind of a weird thing, yeah. I think most people would say, for Ireland so not to So even if you could do it legally, thing. what you, should, you can do politically may be different, of course, absolutely. Yeah. Alan, thank you very much. Dr Alan Rennick from University College London and Freya McClements from the Irish Times, their northern editor.